have always thought that this uh, little tradition of ours, this last sitting ceremony in which we publicly honor one of our own is bittersweet. Uh, whether one leaves this court fully of their own accord or leaves by dint of constitutional imperative, I at least participate with decidedly mixed feelings. Of course, I am always sad. I'm sad because we will lose the insights, the experiences, the views, and sometimes at least the wisdom of someone who has been so much a part of our work. I am sad because a valued voice will soon be silenced. But truth be told, I'm always happy and just a little envious of the new life, the new experiences, and the new path that stretch before a departing colleague. And I always wait with great anticipation to hear just what the honoree has to say. Will they lament the life at law that is lost, or will they celebrate the new life and new experiences to come. And I confess, I confess that each time I have wondered what I would say when my turn came to leave. Of course, I wasn't planning on leaving quite so soon, <laughs> so I didn't give it that much thought. That has required me in recent days to give a lot of thought to what I might say today. Much of what I needed to say was written in that statement that I issued back in August when the governor made his announcement, the one that was there for a time on the judiciary's website, the one in which I expressed my feelings about the honor and the privilege of having been able to serve the people of this state, the one in which I described the way I approached my work at each level of our court system, and where I said that I am content to let history judge me by the body of work that I have left behind after these many years. So what is there to say today? Well, there's a media guy uh, who is out there bemoaning the fact that I didn't comment uh, in that statement about the politics of it all. He thinks I should have been talking about that. Well, that might have made for a better media story. That might have made for something better for him to talk about but that wouldn't be me. I chose then and I choose again today not to comment on the roiling waters of politics that swamped the little boat of my judicial career. What should I say then? You know, the newspapers are full of stories about me, as are my colleagues. Um, they applaud me for being a gifted speaker, an outstanding writer, a scholar, an expert in diverse fields like zoning and employment law, and the list goes on and on. And I guess all that's true, but those are actually learned skills. I could probably teach almost anybody in this room those skills. I could probably teach almost anybody in this room how to do precisely that. That's not who I really am, though. What should I say today about who I really am? In thinking about that, I, I read the stories about me that include another list of descriptions of me, the ones that say that I am patient, that I am kind, that I am compassionate, that I am wise and just, that I am gracious and dignified, that I am strong and courageous. And I can't help but think back on another time a time not so long ago when that was what they said about me, a time nearly seven years ago when I realized that I am all of those things and I wondered how I became them, a time long ago when I realized that I became all of those things because of my son, because of the life that I lived with my son there in the margins and the shadows of society, with the people that the, the important people toss aside. A time when I realized that every important thing I ever became, all of the qualities like patience and compassion and strength and courage, all of it was forged on the anvil of autism. A time nearly seven years ago when I stepped up to a microphone 
to give a speech, a speech about my son and my life there in the shadows, about the lessons that I learned by living in the margins of society. Now, the Chief Justice told me that I can speak this morning for just as long as I <laughs> want. Big mistake, and he should know that by now. I have often said, as part of the speeches that I give, that an open mic and a captive audience, I'm going to say what's on my mind, and today is no different. In thinking about what to say, I can't help but recall what I said then. I considered saying that this day, this day of my last sitting, marks my return to a life in the shadows. But that would not be true, because the truth of it is I have never left the margins of society. I have never left the people like my son, the people in the shadows, the folks that the important people don't see or just don't want to see. So today I choose to say again what I said then. What I say today is this, someday each and every one of you will come across someone like my son. Maybe he's the kid trying to wipe off the table in the fast food restaurant, you know, the only table that's available, and there's a kid who's wiping, 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 and you're standing there with your tray because you want to sit down and eat your meal. Or maybe it's really my son. On a good day, when my son is very, very lucky, and he gets to go out to the movie theater, out to those big glass doors in front and wipe off the fingerprints that the other people leave. And my kid is spraying and wiping and spraying and wiping. And you, you want him to get out of the way so you can go in and see that movie everybody's talking about. Or maybe he's there in the grocery store, part of that little herd of kids, clogging up the aisle. He's the one with the paper in his hands with the picture. He's the one there saying, Charlie, find the can of peas. And he looks at the picture, and he looks at the shelf, and he looks at the picture. And the problem for him is he has a picture of Del Monte peas. And the only ones on the shelf today, God save the Republic, they're Green Giant. And he can't figure out which one's the peas. And you, you're the one trying to get by that herd, trying to be on your way, trying to pick up your groceries. And when that day comes, you're going to be just like me. You're going to want to get by. You want to do what everyone wants to do. You want to push these people aside, look the other way, get on with your busy, important life, or your movie, or your fast food, or your groceries. And when that day comes, stop. Stop. Take a deep breath. Reach down deep, deep into the reservoirs of love, and patience and kindness and compassion that reside deep in every one of our souls. Stop. Take a deep breath. Reach down deep. Think back on this day and tell yourself this. Somebody just like that taught me everything I needed to know to be a justice of the Supreme Court of the state of New Jersey. Think on that, remember that, my work here is done.